you should be measuring the success factors, success factors that you have in the business. But people may tend to measure anything within a business. Welcome to Architecture Corner and today Mikkel Floven is our guest. Welcome Michael. Thank you. You have been working a lot with business information and reporting systems. Mm. Can you tell us a little about your thoughts? Well, I would say that uh, sometimes you actually have to wonder if these uh, systems and reporting uh, processes are really needed, uh, especially the internal ones, uh, since uh, people tend to have many requirements and thoughts about what they like to have, but even changing the requirements and the thoughts and the KPIs uh, next, next year. Now we talked about two main requirements uh, in an earlier episode. Mm -hmm. Then we said that it was like a wish list. Is it the same with internal reporting, that it's a wish list for the business? Yes, some, I would say many people have many thoughts and they don't even agree sometimes within the business what they should use, for example, like KPIs or the requirements. And that's kind of uh, funny, since uh, business should have an understanding of their own success factors. The KPIs you have, what do they measure? You should be measuring the success, fact success factors that you have in the business. But people may tend to measure anything within a in business. It can be sales, it can be costs, uh, whatever. So what is the success factor in a business that they should measure? It depends on every business, of course. Uh, one business uh, has uh, perhaps uh, the sales that should be looking for more. Another one should be actually tending to think about the cost. Uh, it depends on every business. And uh, the strange thing is actually that sometimes they tend to try to mess everything into one uh, system. Uh, like in the IT department, they're trying to help and support all businesses in the same solution. And that's not appropriate. So when we're talking about KPIs, a lot of KPIs are economical terms mm -hmm. and you don't measure other things that may have an impact if your company is profitable in the long term. Mm. Is this something you have seen? Uh, well, I think every company has to agree on what they think is the long term success factors. And uh, that is something, of course, you will see if they are right in the long term. Uh, but the problem I think today is that uh, they're not even agreeing on the things they should be using uh, at this very moment. So they tend to wish for uh, many things at the same time, measuring a lot of stuff. And that is of course cumbersome, it costs a lot of money, it involves a lot of people to do uh, measuring this and to find this information. And that's why I'd say that uh, the businesses are actually looking for too much information and also uh, with too much work uh, to do this work and to get this information gathered. Uh, can it be that when you're running a business that you want to have a lot of information to make decisions? Yes, of course, but the, the, the strange thing is then of course again that uh, if you don't want to know what you're looking for you tend to ask for a lot of information just in case uh, it's good to have. So that, that's why you have those big VI solutions where you store everything. Yeah, that's a very good example, of course, that uh, people say that this is good to have, we should look at this also, and they really don't perhaps know, I would say, what they should use it for. It's just storing and gathering uh, in case of, and trying to find sometimes the, uh, the solution or the, uh, the result of what is being measured and when you do this. When we talk about KPIs, you can say that we measure KPIs on a monthly basis. Mm. This is rather common. Mm -hmm. And when you do a reorganization or change something in company, you change the KPIs. Mm. What will happen if you try to measure on the long term then? If you are changing your organization's structure and that is interfering with the KPIs, then you're measuring something wrong. Because it's not how you organize that should be actually the, the result or the reason for how you should measure or be successful. Of course, uh, resources, competence and so forth is important, um, but you should actually understand what is the long term and what is supposed to measure, uh, even though you do changes in organization. So I would say if you do change and you affect your KPIs, something is definitely wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, some KPIs, they are more like measuring the performance to m give them 
people in the organization rewards. Yes, and uh, as I said from the start, uh, we can see uh, in many big organizations where they actually they are working with forecast, working with budgeting, they're working with the actuals, and a lot of people are involved in this in the economy departments, and of course also IT departments trying to support these solutions. But uh, the question is actually if they're really needed, uh, since the KPIs should actually be something that is long-term based also, that is uh, a foundation for measuring the success in the business that you're working uh, with the clients that you're working with. So let's say that's something strange otherwise. If you look at software development, mm -hmm. you can look at no estimates that you are not doing prognosis or estimations how long time things take. Instead, you do with it. If you look at business reporting, how can I apply that thinking? Uh, well, of course, if I understood it correctly, you mean that uh, companies actually are not working with budgeting or forecasting that much. They're working with looking at what is the actual figures today. Yeah. Uh, it's like, for example, Handelsbank has been a company doing that for many years, uh, not working with the budget. Uh, and I would say that is probably a much more interesting way of working, actually, also in the future. If you just know what <laughs> the correct figures are that you should be measuring and looking at. Uh, I have seen examples of big companies where they have this almost like rain dance experience of doing forecasting and budgeting and also where they actually are then involving not many people uh, every month to see how are we doing now, what's going to happen. But anyway, despite this huge effort every month, uh, they understand and will understand that in October suddenly they came to realize that, oh, our money has uh, been, uh, is end, ended. So they actually, every year in October, all, despite their work with the prognosis, the forecasts, the budgeting, they have this problem every year anyway. So that means, for example, in this big company then, in the IT department, they have to close down projects, they have to make changes and do new prioritization. And that means also they are actually cut something that has been discussed before to be very important to run as projects but some they move it to the other year following or just close it. So that means that having this kind of uh, work with forecasting and budgeting and not then getting the results is of course very strange. Why do it at all if you don't get the effect you should have or you're expecting? So the information you collect is not relevant, it's irrelevant? I'd say that uh, if you don't know what you're looking for, you try, you try to collect everything. But if you know what you're looking for, you likely you need, then you do that and nothing else. So, of course, yes, sometimes it's much is irrelevant in information. What would your suggestion be to these larger companies that capture too much information? I would say that, of course, first you have to decide and agree on what actually is the success factors. But I would say just to, it would be interesting to see what would happen if you just close down all these internal systems that actually are existing. And all these people working with Excel and PowerPoint reports to the steering groups or to their monthly reporting line or close down the work they're doing right now in the PMS systems also. Uh, I think nothing much will happen actually. Uh, it's just build, we make that people actually can do something better. You can actually probably cost, cost cutting instead and taking away both IT supporting systems. You could probably also cut a lot of uh, work with less people. So I think it's much more possible and profitable to make this change, as you suggest, just for, to try and see if you just elim eliminate uh, this work and these processes that actually I don't think actually is gaining that, that much to the business. What is stopping them from doing this? It sounds very easy. What is stopping them from doing the right stuff? Uh, well, of course, people want to have something to do uh, in the work. Uh, so, of course, these departments have their own existing uh, work uh, living on this. Uh, but of course also sometimes if you don't know what you're looking for it's better to see, look like you're doing something at least than nothing uh, but I, I would say that it would be interesting to just see if top management also if they know what they're looking for <laughs> is if they would actually try to do this and, and stop investing in projects that actually don't give that much support and benefit to the business uh, how if they would stop these processes of following up and doing forecast and looking at the wrong numbers and the wrong KPIs, yeah. uh, I would say probably nothing would happen. We just cut costs and be much more profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with telcos a lot, mm -hmm. and you have been working with yeah. telecom providers for a long time. Yes. If you look at the telco sector, there are some reports that are mandatory. You have to provide them to authorities. Mm -hmm. 
when you do large transformation programs, you often fail to be ready in time, mm -hmm. and you have to delay some things. Mm. So is it a possibility to delay everything on the reporting side that is not mandatory from a legal perspective? You have to send two or three reports to uh, the governmental bodies that control, and you have to send a tax report, you have mm. to send a financial statement, mm. Mm and skip rest. Is that a way to go forward? Of course not in the long run. You have to have some idea of what is, uh, is the purpose of your business. What are the actual success factors to your business? But if you don't know what they really are, then you should actually think about what am I doing? Uh, and can I actually skip these uh, other kind of activities and supporting systems that I actually are trying to build for some obscure reason? Uh, so I, I think you should have, of course, you should know your success factors and work with them. But until you agree on those and you have these few uh, identified, the rest, as you said, is, oh, I think, open to, to uh, take away or eliminate. In the old days, you had to pay for each call you made. Now you have a fixed fee. If you have a fixed fee, mm -hmm. the need for reporting is much less. Yes, yeah, that's true. Uh, actually, I've been working, as I said before, in the telco business, and I implemented ABC, ABM in full scale in, in part of that uh, organization. Uh, and then we were looking for what services are most profitable. And of course, that is something you have to need, have to know about if you're able to close down the right services and also know what's happening. So I think, uh, of course, uh, every telco also should understand what they should be working with, what kind of. Uh, information as such. So it's on a high level so that you, you can take the high level decisions? Yes, I, I, of course, high level decisions of course are more strategic. Yeah. It's about like where are you supposed to have your production, where it's more profitable to have that, what kind of uh, price you should have to, uh, to the business, how we're actually going to measure again competitors and so forth. Mm -hmm. But these, uh, these decisions of course are based on understanding the core business like profitability on, on products and also how you create value. And that is, I would say, a lot of these existing today reports that are, and, and the planning that actually are that being performed in today's telcos and other business, of course, also, is not supporting uh, that kind of decision. Uh, I think they're supporting something else, uh, less important, uh, probably more to organization structures than to understand the, the long-term business profitability for like a telco or other kind of branch. BI. Mm -hmm. Is that a way to look in a rear mirror? You can't see the future with it, or uh, can you use the BI to see what you should do on an innovation basis? Yeah, of course, if you discuss information as such, you can find another kind of information that you didn't have before in real time and so forth. Uh, Again, you can use BI, of course, for predicting things. If you just understand how they relate to each other, but then, of course, again, you have to understand this relationship that you're looking for. Is it the one that actually are supporting our success or not? Uh, you can otherwise get the information and statistics and, and get correlation between more or less everything if you continue uh, to work uh, with a lot of large, big numbers and, and in large scale. So you don't know it's the causality of the figures you measure? No, that's, that could be one, one part, yes. Uh, so again, you have to understand why are we doing this and for what reason. And I think this is where they're lacking today, today's campus. They are stuck in, in trying to do things and looking for other information, not then just uh, actually controlling and managing the right information. So they're gathering a lot for strange reasons and they're also doing some work for forecasting and so forth every day, every month without any actually business value uh, to the company. Yeah. So your recommendation is to question if we need this report, if we need this kind of information? Yes, I, I remember for also one work we did in a large company where we were looking at the reports that were existing and they tried to see and trail them down and see actually what this report that we've introduced now for many years and also not just one but tens and twenties of reports and what happened was that when they trailed them down and looked for who the receivers were and who was using them, they found out that actually one out of 20 was actually needed anymore. It was the only one that should be needed. The rest was actually either not read or used or skipped. So of course you have to question at the time, what are you do, doing this for and for what reason? If you're measuring how often a report or a view is used and you don't get any hits, then you should that, take it good, away. That's a good start, but as you know, people are ten, they tend to make their own day full of work anyway. Mm. 
So I say that uh, people may look at the wrong report also a lot of time, uh, but it's not useful. So we have, it's a two-way thinking here. First, if they're using it at all and looking at it for their decisions, and also who is the decision maker really? I mean, is it the middle manager or is it someone uh, higher up or wherever who should be using this? And secondly, is this actually the right uh, data used for being a successful company? Yeah. So that is a two-way questioning for us to have to do. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing our thoughts about relevance of business information. Thank you. And really nice to have you here as a guest at Architecture Corner now in Stockholm. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for viewing Architecture Corner and hope to see you again next week.